Hello, my name is Pat Fitzgerald of Fitzgerald Nurseries and I'm coming to you from a Plantarium in the Netherlands 2014 and the new Irish correspondent for GardenVideo.com and my host and my interview here, here is Marcus of Lubera. Hello Marcus. Hi, Pat. Marcus, um, I met you last year yeah. and uh, we had some good time having some dinner. And on the show and afterwards. On the show and afterwards and we had some good time, we had dinner and you showed me all about uh, your wonderful new berries and uh, fruit crops. Um, can you tell me a little bit about Marcus? How did you get interested in this whole side of horticulture? As a young man I was interested in two things, literature and uh, farming horticulture, so very different things. And the people who knew me in literature, they didn't know about the other side of me and people who knew me as a farm boy didn't know my other side. So uh, first after uh, school I studied literature, German literature, and uh, after two three years it was not enough basic for me, so I changed to the other side ah. and by, became a horticulturalist. So you wanted to get your hands dirty? The hands dirty and more based on, on these herbs. More with the land? Yeah. So you set up a, a business uh, based on your passion for growing things. Yeah. And can you tell me a little bit about Lubera? How did Lubera develop then out of this passion? When I started first, of course, I, I was interested in fruit and, and top fruit, apples. So uh, in, in, the, in the 90s, beginning of the 90s, 20 years ago, uh, we started to introduce new resistance, cab resistant varieties from the eastern countries to Switzerland. And I, I tried to bring them into professional fruit culture. It didn't work because they were so used to the varieties you know also nowadays, Gala, Golden Delicious, and they didn't want to grow more resistant varieties, why ever. So that's the reason I changed to gardens, because uh, I had good varieties which are perfect for gardening, resistant, better to eat. Nobody in the professional food culture didn't want these varieties, so I went to the home garden market and concentrated mid of the 90s, end of the 90s, 100% to the home garden market, where we have different criteria which are important. Not kilogram are important, not picking ability, not transportation is important, but eating quality is important, easiness of the product, resistance of the product, and it's also good if the product is a little bit different. Yes, so we are selling food by the kilo now, you're saying, whereas uh, your um, strategy and your passion is for selling food by nutrition and beneficial value. Yes, of course, yeah. yeah. So can you tell me something about some of the actual plants uh, I see here? Oh so yeah, we have so many new things. This year, for example, we have uh, these forberries. Forberries we have bred from seeds of wild forberry uh, from the States, forebears are Rebus aureum, Rebus odoratum, and we have selected uh, uh, in the last 10 years three black uh, forebears. We name them forebears because they have uh, uh, blooms, blooms have perfume, they have fruit, and in autumn they have some autumn coloration. Those are named forebear, four advantages with this fruit. And this year we're introducing the first orange variety. Oh, very uh, so good. we have now two colors. We have the orange one and the black one. And we are already working on the next generation because these ones have the size of a red currant. And these ones ha ha have about double the size of a black currant. Of course, we want these now bigger. But this will be another five to ten years. So until um, you introduced um, these four berries through Lubera, would European gardeners have tasted the forberry before? No, in, in Europe it wasn't. It, it isn't a crop who wasn't interested. Uh, in European gardens we have the, the currants, normal currants. Yes. Uh, but they have no rebus. You see the plants sometimes in motorways, in the middle way. Yes. They are planted as hedges. 
but they are, were not selected and planted for fruit quality and bloom quality. So this is an entirely new fruit for the European yes, gardener. Yes, yes. And with different colours, I can assume that you've got different nutritional and antioxidant no, values. They are rather similar to black currants. Very similar to black currants. This one will be a little bit less because it has not the same amount of anthocyanins. Okay. Very good. So that is our four berries. Can you show us another crop which you think? Another crop uh, new in this year in, in, in our nursery are pointilla berries, dot berries we name them also. Uh -huh. Because if you have the small fruits here, on the fruits, you can zoom if you want. Mm -hmm. You see small little dots. Ah, okay, yes, yes, yes. And yes. so these were, it, botanically these are Eliagnus, Umbelata. There were mm -hmm. some people coming here that this is not Umbelata, so I don't know, mm -hmm. but it's Eliagnus. And we found this crop in the west coast of the US. Uh, they are in the wild because they were introduced in the 19th century from uh, Japan or China. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are in the wild there. And uh, there are also some varieties. So we introduced about 20, 30 varieties, we tested which one are enough into hardy, which have the best quality and selected three ones, uh, two uh, red ones and one yellow one. And mm -hmm. the interesting thing in this crop is, the first interesting thing is uh, they are nice to look at and good to eat in a time where you don't have anything other in the garden, in October, November. Very good, yes. So uh, it's, it's very different. Uh, they are now a little bit early because we forced them to have nice plants mm -hmm. here. They are changing the color begin of September. So uh, the whole September, October, we have these nice shrubs with these colors in your garden. Uh, technically, they are good to eat. Not many wild fruit you can eat directly. These ones you can eat directly from the bush. You can also cook other things. And they have more lycopene in, in them as in tomatoes. Very good. So we have something we can grow in our garden in a European climate. Yeah. We can look at it as a hedge, we can yeah. look at it yeah. as an yeah. ornamental bush, yeah. or we can look at and, it as a shrub. As, as always with Lubera, we are, we are also trying to make them better, so we have already done about two or three thousand seedlings, Very which good. are waiting in our nursery. So, because we think we can perhaps make it even a little bit better or com more compact, but for the moment we think we have very good varieties which give a new, a new colors and new possibilities into the fruit garden very and good. into the ornamental garden too. And into your control in the garden for your own enjoyment and yeah. your own food production. Yeah. That sounds good. I really look forward, um, Marcus, to bringing some of these plants to Ireland yeah. and we will let them see how they like the Irish climate in production. And how the Irish will like And the how the Irish will like these, of course. Okay, thank you, Pat. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> Hmm, where have all the flowers gone? I know where. Here you go to Luberaco UK with all our breedings and thousands of more plants. Here you can inscribe to our YouTube channel and now pick the flowers.